<laughs> anyway, let me ask you a question. Does a computer deserve human rights? No. <laughs> so recently, or more like last year actually, I finished reading the Space Odyssey series by Arthur C. Clarke. And what I loved most about his books was his description of HAL 9000, the artificially super-intelligent computer turned villain. You see, HAL terminated most of his human counterparts, but one survived, Dave Bowman. What Dave did was he went back to the ship and attempted to dismantle HAL. And in that moment, Bowman becomes a cold, emotionless killer in a sense, and HAL becomes a scared, desperate victim. Now, as Hal, as a sentient being, who is fully aware of his actions, who knows what he's doing, who knows what he's thinking, was he deserving of a second chance? Was he deserving of a trial? Or going back to the first question, does a computer deserve human rights? So this may seem like a question that can wait a long while, but in reality, the age of supercomputing is almost upon us. Back in 1965, this gentleman right here, Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, he predicted that computer speeds would double every two years because the number of transistors that could fit under computer chips would also double every two years. Now this exponential rate has held true for most of computing history, and it continues to hold, to hold true today. So most computer scientists predict that by 2050 or by 2060, we'll have artificial superintelligence. So it's not a question of if, it's more like a question of when, and we'll have to answer it sooner or later. So let's start with defining humanities. We can't define whether a computer is human-like or not without defining that first. Conversely, we can say that if you somehow maintain a 4.0 all throughout high school, you're superhuman. I mean, who can do that, right? <laughs> Anyways, to put jokes aside, let's also put aside the biological definition of humanity since we're discussing computers. I personally find that the best definition for humanity was stated by the French philosopher René Descartes. His claim was, oh, there it is. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. Now, this here is what sets humans apart from the rest of the species on Earth. A cat, for instance, does not think about its own existence, or at least as far as I can tell. Right? But we as humans can think on a much higher plane. We can question our existence, we can reason, we can think. And with that comes the ability to remember, learn, and reason. So let's examine these points. Can a robot remember? Well, in 2011, oh, there we go. IBM made headlines by entering their computer Watson in the Jeopardy game show. And it was pitted against former champions Rudder and Jennings. Now Watson had 16 terabytes of RAM, and could scan up to 500 gigabytes of information per second. To put that in perspective, the whole Library of Congress will fit into 10 terabytes. And 500 gigabytes per second is like reading a million books per second. So that's memory. Memory is covered. Now we move on to learning. If you want to find a computer that does some form of learning, you don't need to find a big corporation like IBM to do something like that. We can find it here at Whitney. Our very own robotics team uses a type of programming called Proportional Integral Derivatives, or PID for short. Now what PID does is it uses the robust color sensor, pictured here, to figure out how far it is deviated from the line it's trying to follow. And based on that margin of error, it can correct and adjust for future error. Now, by the definition of learning, or the modification of the behavior through acquired experience, it seems that a robot is learning. And so we come to my final point. Can a robot reason? Well, certainly there are companies that are already working on this. Google's artificial intelligence division, DeepMind, created a computer called AlphaGo to play the ancient Chinese board game of Go. It was pitted against the European champion for the board game and won five consecutive games. They accomplished this feat by using a type of processor called neural nets, which are meant to mimic the neurons in the human brain. In this particular instance, it analyzed huge data sets to get what it needed to learn to play the game. The researchers had to feed it over 30 million human moves so that it could predict the next human moves at least 57% of the time. And to quote the researchers, it developed a sense of intuition, or so-called reasoning. 
Well, is that it then? Is, is that all there is to it? Is that all there is to the meaning of humanity is just being able to think? Well, we know we're also influenced by our emotions and by our passions, by our feelings. Surely computers lack those. Not quite. Let me introduce you to Pepper. Oh, there we go. Pepper is the latest in the line of emotional robots developed by Aldebaran, a company dedicated to producing humanoid robots. Pepper is able to recognize your emotions, and he can correspond to them accordingly. And in the future, it's predicted that machines may be able to experience emotions like joy, sadness, surprise, and fear. So when we have a computer that can do all of these things, when we have a computer that can remember, learn, reason, and experience emotion to a certain extent, would it even still be called a computer or simply an artificial being? At that point, it might ask us the fundamental question humanity has been asking itself for the eons. Who am I? What would we tell the computer? When we say to it, we're made by us for the sole purpose of serving us. That's what they were for, was to make tasks easier. Or conversely, should we tell it, you get labor rights? Though I don't know what a computer would do with like a 401k or vacation days. <laughs> I guess they could use sick days for when like, you know, ABG firewalls and enough or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, this leads to more rights down the road. Should a computer be able to vote? Or like I asked earlier, should they be able to hold the right to a trial by jury? These are all questions that are up to debate. And if so, who's to decide? Should it go to politicians? I hope it's not Trump. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> or should it go to the scientists who make these developments? <laughs> Maybe it should go to the general public, people like you and me. And if that's the case, our generation especially needs to be informed about this problem because this is well within our lifetime. Robots are rising to the challenge. Are we ready for it? Thank you.